electric. Welcome back everyone for another energy update video. It's the beginning of March, so time to go through the end of February update for our solar and energy usage. And what a cracking month it's been. Not weather-wise, not just stats-wise, but everything has all gelled together. And the data looks exceptional for just about every metric. So I'm really pleased with the results this month. Um, so I'm really pleased with the system that we've got here. So let's quickly cover that system. We've got three solar arrays. One's a 3.9 kilowatt solar array, south facing. That's on our FIT tariff. We were one of the last people to get onto the UK FIT tariff. Then I added a 2.4 kilowatt solar edge array. And the third array we added is a split system with uh, some panels on our east facing gable wall and three panels on our garage roof that are slightly shaded. That's using a Solus inverter, a 2.5 kilowatt inverter, but we don't get more than about 1.1, 1.2 maximum power out of those because of the shading and the angles. So that's the solar we've got. We've then also got a Victron inverter that's uh, connected to five US 3000 Pylon Tech batteries. So we've got 17 and a half kilowatt hours, uh, probably about 15 kilowatt hours usable of battery storage. Collectively, that extra solar and the extra battery is meaning that uh, we should be off grid quite a lot and we should be able to maximize during the winter uh, the off peak excellent tariff from Octopus Energy. We're on the Octopus Go tariff. So we're paying seven and a half pence a kilowatt hour. And uh, yeah, just before we start the stats, yeah, we haven't paid any peak rate energy over winter, any significant amounts, a few kilowatt hours here and there. Uh, other than that, it's all been at the seven and a half cheap rate, which is exactly what we wanted the battery and extra solar for. So over the winter period, everything has been working out really, really well. Low energy bills, decent amount of solar energy coming in and good usage of it in the house. But before I get into this month's stats, I'd like to start by reviewing previous years. It's nice to know where we've come from and where we are now, how we've got here, that journey. So let's have a look at the graphs for the last couple of years and look at annual usage. So in 2020, we had one peak where it was over one megawatt hour, but then you got this big bank of, um, should we call them summer months from March through to September, where we've got in excess of 600 uh, kilowatt hours generated. And that leaves the five months either side, three months, October, November, December, and two months at the start of the year, January, February, where we're not generating enough. Now, I've always said we need 500 kilowatt hours um, to be self-sufficient. That's our number here. But now I've added electric heating as well with the air-to-air -air heating. I need another 100 to 200 kilowatt hours. So actually in winter, we need around 700 kilowatt hours to be self-sufficient. In 2021, January and February are very similar. October, though, slightly better generation at 400 kilowatt hours, but still five months where we don't have enough energy to be self-sufficient. They're the winter months. So if we look at the last 12 months, we can really start to see that the extra solar panels we're adding are making a tangible difference. October is well over 600 kilowatt hours, heading towards self-sufficiency. And even February, the month that's just gone, nearly 500 kilowatt hours. That leaves just three months of the winter period where we definitely haven't got enough solar energy. And that is about as best as we can do with solar panels. So with last March generating over 800 kilowatt hours, I'm expecting this month to be self-sufficient. So for last month, the month of February, 484 kilowatt hours, three days over 30 kilowatt hours, nearly half the month though, around 20 kilowatt hours, and just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days under 10 kilowatt hours, averaging 17 kilowatt hours in total. This chart clearly shows the uplift after the three winter months that I referred to earlier. And the breakdown for that is 256 kilowatt hours from the 3.9 kilowatt Solus array, 82 kilowatt hours from the 2.5 kilowatt Solus array, that's the uh, east gable panels and the panels over my garage roof, and our 2.4 kilowatt Solar Edge array generated 146 kilowatt hours. Looking at a comparison for other Februarys, this February was very, very similar to last February, and I thought that was exceptional. So 256.5 kilowatt hours on our 3.9 kilowatt array, almost the best we've had. 262 back in 2019, the first year we had it installed, that was actually the best. And the thing that really made the difference this month was the new array, the 82 kilowatt hours. 
Import and export then was pretty good, 152 kilowatt hours imported and just 29 kilowatt hours exported. On this graph though, just 11 days you can see where we imported from the grid. That means 17 days we were self-sufficient, running just on battery and solar power. Usage wise, just 70.7 kilowatt hours into hot water via the My Energy Eddy device, 192 kilowatt hours charging our Mini and Golf on the Zappi, and 338 kilowatt hours recorded into the house. Marginally different numbers here in this summary, but a good summary is 598 kilowatt hours consumed, 477 came from generation, we imported 149 and exported just under 29 kilowatt hours, meaning we were 75% green. And all of that lovely greenness leads to a very low bill from Octopus Energy Go Tariff, £22.71. We actually imported 132.9 kilowatt hours, according to the Agile app, and averaged 9.15 pence per kilowatt hour. If we'd have been on the Agile Tariff, £48.54. Still coming down slightly. So why are those numbers so good? Let's have a look at the individual devices to start with, comparing February to January. And you can see the very top one, Zappi Solar Kilowatt Hours, 115 in February. Well, in January, it was Zappi Grid Kilowatt Hours, so we've imported a lot less from the grid to put into the electric cars to start with. The Toshiba Air Conditioning Units, 92 kilowatt hours instead of 158, so much reduced energy for heating. As I said, the Zappi grid is much lower. It's only 58 kilowatt hours. Eddie Solar, the brown one, 53 kilowatt hours. It was actually 66 kilowatt hours last month. So we've actually reduced the amount of kilowatt hours for hot water as well. The oven was lower. Everything looked lower. So heating and cooking and energy usage, everything is lower for February than it is January. And in summary, solar 484 kilowatt hours, that's 110 kilowatt hours better than last month and 90 kilowatt hours better than last year. Import just 133, a lot less than January at 525 and again half what we imported from the grid last February. The bigger battery making a real big difference. 34 kilowatt hours exported, okay January was a little bit less but last year in February 59 kilowatt hours. Eddie heating the hot water, just 70 kilowatt hours. This month I've been doing a test, keeping the level of hot water in the Mixergy tank as low as I possibly can, sometimes around 0%, and then just heating up the hot water as we need it, almost like a combination boiler. And the result, instead of January, 104 kilowatt hours, just 70, and that's half what we did last February in 2022. Half. That's a significant saving. Heating costs, all of the heating elements that we have, including the uh, Toshiba air conditioning, just 110 kilowatt hours. More than half what we did last month in January. It was a lot colder in January. And uh, yeah, 344 kilowatt hours in February 2022. So a third of the heating cost this year round. The cost, £22.70. Last month was 52.62, And last February, 33.76. So despite the energy cost going up a huge amount, we actually spent less on energy this month. Overall, this has been a fantastic February. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. I most certainly did. Looking back at the stats, there's some great numbers in there. We're doing so, so well. And it's only going to get better in March onwards, isn't it? Well, that's the plan anyway. Every other March has always been better than February, so it should get better. Thank you so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found some useful data there for comparison or insight into what you might be doing. Let me know in the comments how you got on, if you've got solar, and what you're planning to do if you're about to go down the solar route. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care. See you again soon. Bye for now.